Hey everyone, welcome to The Breakdown, where I take your suggestions on cool sequences or effects from movies, TV shows, games, or anything else, and attempt to recreate them, hopefully while teaching you some cool tips or techniques that you haven't seen before along the way. In this video, we'll be recreating the title sequences from the TV show Lovecraft Country, which are really awesome, so let's just get started. If we take a look at the reference, there's a lot of cool stuff happening here, but let's start off pretty simple with the background image. We'll want to pick something that we can break down into multiple elements later on so that we can stagger them at different depths and help make our intro feel more dynamic. But before we even do that, we'll want to style the image that we choose to be a bit closer to our references look. Now of course the backgrounds in Lovecraft Country's intros are handmade to be stylized like this and they're pretty simple to make using shape layers or Photoshop or Illustrator but just really time consuming. So instead, I'll be showing you a way to get pretty close to the style we're after using effects that you can apply to any image. The first thing you might notice about the backgrounds in a reference is that they're usually made of three or four colors in a single monochromatic scale, meaning they're all pretty much the same color, but with different values, making some darker and some lighter. To mimic that, we'll add the posterize effect to our background image. What this effect does is split each color channel into however many levels we enter here. So you might initially think that if I set it to four, that'll mean our image will only have four different levels of color in it, but it'll actually have 12, four levels for each of the three color channels. To actually only have four levels of color in our image, we need to first add the black and white effect and place it above the posterize. Since we've made the image black and white first, when the posterize effect is applied, it's only separating our black and white values into four different levels. Now to control the look of our posterized image, let's add the levels effect to the top of the stack and play around with the input black, input white, and gamma handles until we get it to look decent. Then finally we'll give it color again by applying the tint effect and changing the white value to whichever color we want. And this is where we can kind of choose the color theme that we want to stick to for our intro. What also helps the overall look is if we slightly adjust the black value to have a little bit of color to match our theme as well. And now we're looking pretty good, so we'll come back and break this image into multiple elements in a bit, but first, let's work on adding our intro's text in. Looking at our reference, the text seems to change colors from a saturated color matching our theme to something closer to white, and it looks like it uses a grunge map to drive the dissolve. So let's see what we can do to replicate this. First we'll create the text, and if you're wondering, the font is called Serif Gothic Heavy. Next we'll need to import a grunge texture to help us with the dissolve. I generally find textures I'm looking for by just googling whichever texture I'm after, and then in the tool section set the size to large. Then I just scroll through until I find one I like. For this look, you're going to want to find one that has a lot going on and a gradient of black to white, not just black and white. Once we've got it in our comp, rename it to text grunge, place it underneath our text layer, and set the text grunge track mat to alpha mat. Now we've got the grunge in the shape of our text, but to actually get the grunge to dissolve like our reference text, we'll need to apply two effects first, levels and tint. Now in our tint, go ahead and change the black value to a very saturated color matching our project's theme. And to make this look even better, let's also grab our white value and change that to a slightly off-white value that also has a hint of our theme's color. Now all that's left to do is animate our levels effect. So head to the beginning of the comp, set a keyframe on the levels histogram, and then erase our input black value so that the text grunge is all or mostly just our saturated color. Then move forward three or so seconds and flip our levels around the other way, making it mostly all white. After that, I'll select the keyframes and hit F9 to ease them, and just like that, we've got a grunge color dissolve. One more thing we can do to help make the beginning consist only of our saturated color is set a keyframe for the tint's white value at the end of our levels animation, then head back to the beginning and grab its pick whip and sample the tint's black value. Now we've got a much more graceful transition from our saturated color to off-white. Next up, let's create our 3D camera movement. Go ahead and create a new camera by going to Layer, New Camera. Then we need to go ahead and enable 3D on all our layers, hit P on our camera, and animate its Z position moving backwards. To match the movement of the Lovecraft Country intro better, I'll just import the reference, lower its opacity, and then set the start and end keyframes of the camera's position so that the text looks about the right size throughout. I'll also go ahead and push our background image about 3000 pixels back on the z-axis to create some depth, and then scale it up again so that we don't see its edges. Now that we've got a nice basic setup, we can go ahead and break our background image into multiple elements to add more depth and to make it look more interesting. In some of the reference examples, they also subtly animate their backgrounds, so if you want some tips on how to animate still photos, I've got a whole video that you can check out later. With the background I chose for this example, it doesn't really make sense to animate part of it, so we'll stick to separating out elements and giving them different Z values so that we create some parallax. But before we do that, I think the background would look better if I just kept it to the bottom elements. My glasses, a potion bottle, the two books, and the scroll. This way, it looks a little less crowded and a little more deliberate, in my opinion. So I'll just create a quick mask around the elements I don't want and then set it to subtract. Then to fill in the background hole we just made, I'll create a new solid using Control or Command Y, make it black and call it background solid. Then I'll just grab the tint effect from our background image and paste it onto the background solid and we're good to go. 
Now for separating out the remaining elements, I'll duplicate the background twice and rename one to background glasses and the other to background book. On background glasses, I'll create a mask around the glasses, invert that mask, then set it to subtract so that only the glasses are left on it. And I'll do the same for the background book layer by just masking around that, inverting that mask again, and setting it to subtract as well. Lastly, I'll copy the two masks we just made over to the original background image layer and disable the inversions on them so that we're just straight up subtracting the glasses in the book from this layer. Now that we've got everything separated out, it's time to just push a few layers back on the Z axis. So I'll set the glasses Z position to 4000 and the book Z position to 5000. Now that we've pushed them back, we'll just need to make sure we're at the end of the timeline and then hit S with them both selected to bring up their scale. A quick and easy way to scale them back up to the right size is to just look at the bounding box of each of their layers and match that to the bounding box of our background layer. After getting that all sorted, we can finally start adding the layers of grunge, scratches, and smudges to create the unique fly-through that a reference has. So after collecting some textures the same way we did earlier, we can just drop a few into our composition. Then go ahead and turn them all into 3D layers, and to make it easier to work with, hide them all except one. First of all, we'll set the blending mode to screen so that the black values become transparent, then we'll apply the levels effect so that we can adjust the look of our grunge. Many grunge textures aren't on a perfect black background, and since we're layering a bunch on top of each other, all of this minor grey area will end up making our final look a little murky and hard to see. The histogram over here is showing us how much of our photo is perfect black all the way up to perfect white on the right. So by sliding the input black handle up, we're effectively moving the goalpost for what we want to consider perfect black. If we bring it up to the main spike or just past it, we'll get rid of a lot of that grey murkiness as you can see if I toggle the levels effect on and off. Next what I'm going to do is grab the tint effect from our background layer and paste it onto the grunge so that instead of white, we have grunge that matches our color theme as well. Then we just want to copy those two effects and paste them onto all of our grunge layers, making any tweaks to the levels that we might need to and also making sure to set all of their blending modes to screen as well. Once they're all sorted out, we can start arranging them. Since our camera is moving backwards, we'll want to go to the end of our timeline when the camera can see the most, and then arrange each grunge layer here. Basically, you're just going to want to pull it forward on the z-axis and then scale it up so that it fills the whole comp. After that, just move the playhead forward and backwards to see if you like the positioning and tweak it from there. Then all you have to do is continue that one step for the rest of the grunge layers you have, pulling each one back slightly more to create a nice sense of depth. Once that's sorted, you'll want to create holes in some of the grunge layers so that we can actually see our title more clearly. So just select the problematic grunge layers, move to the end of the timeline, create a mask in a sort of random shape around parts of the title, and then flip the mask to subtract and increase the feather a lot. Then just repeat that step for the other grunge layers, making sure to let some areas overlap with the text to keep things looking organic. After that, we can take it up a notch by duplicating grunge layers that we like, masking out specific portions of it, and then placing them at different depths and locations just to help add more complexity and depth in our scene. And if we even take a look at the reference, you can spot a few places where they seem to have taken parts of the same grunge layer and moved them around as well. One more thing to note is in the reference you can see that there's actually a dark layer of grunge that dissolves over time making the background image easier to see. To do that, we can actually just take any grunge layer we already have, reset the tint so that it's back to black and white, and sort of do what we did with our text grunge at the beginning. We'll want to animate its levels histogram so that it starts off with a lot of white, and then over time adjust the handle so that it animates to barely any white. And it might even be helpful to bring up the output black value at the start to make it even brighter. Now, if we leave it as is, we're kind of doing the opposite of what we want. We've just added a bunch of white that fades over time, so what we can do to fix that is just swap the colors on our tint so that we invert the black and white. Then just change the blending mode from screen to multiply so that the white parts of our layer are transparent and the black parts show up. Now, something else I noticed in the reference is this randomized posterized grunge that seems to be faintly on top of the whole intro. There are a lot of ways to create this look, but I found the fastest way is to use the wiggle expression and the posterized time effect. To start off, we'll need to find a decently sized texture. I found one by searching for film noise textures, and once we've got that imported, create a new comp called random grunge, and make sure its dimensions are set to the same as your intro compositions. I've also set the frame rate to 24 because that's what my intro frame rate is, but the frame rate you set it to doesn't really matter, it's just important that you remember what you set it to. Now once you've created it, go ahead and import your film noise texture, and to visualize how big it'll look with our text, we can head back to our main comp, copy the text, and paste it into the random grunge comp. Then just scale it up to roughly cover the same size, lower its opacity by hitting T, and then we'll set it to a guide layer by right-clicking and choosing guide layer. Now if you aren't familiar with the guide layers, it basically just makes it so when we add the random grunge comp to any other composition, we won't see the layers marked as guide layers. With that sorted, we can just scale our film noise texture so that it looks like a good size. Next hit P and then holding shift hit R so that we bring up both the layer's position and rotation. And starting with the position, holding alt or option, hit the stopwatch to bring up its expression box. I'll just be adding a basic wiggle to move our layer 24 times per second, and to move it by something big like 1500 pixels. 
We essentially just want to have our layers position randomly move every single frame, which is why I mentioned it was important to remember what frame rate you set this composition to. You might notice that the wiggle moves the layer outside of the composition view every once in a while, but we'll fix that in a second. For now, just copy the position's wiggle and paste it onto the rotation's expression box, but change the rotation amount to something a little more reasonable, like 100. Now to fix the grunge moving out of bounds, we just need to apply the CC Repetile effect. Here we can expand all the edges of our comp by two or 3,000 pixels, which is just going to mirror the edges of the comp out for us. Now heading back to our main composition, I'll just drag in our random grunge comp, and if we hit play, we immediately get assaulted by a new randomized grunge image every frame. So to slow things down for us, we'll just apply the posterized time effect, which basically just lets us set a target frame rate for the layer. If we set it to something like 6, our grunge is now changing only 6 times per second, which is both less distracting and matches our reference better. Since the grunge needs to be black, we'll just have to invert the layer with the invert effect and then set the blending mode to multiply. And if you feel like the grunge is a little too strong, you can just add the levels effect and bring down the input white a tad and we're golden. Now all that's left is to make our final adjustment layer with some last effects to polish it off. I'll start by adding the add grain effect, changing the viewing mode to final output so that we can actually see what it'll look like more clearly. Then I'll lower the intensity and size to 0.5 and increase the softness to 2 which looks like this. Next I'll add a really soft glow. First I'll change the glow colors to A and B colors, set them to a bright color within our color theme, and then pick whip the other color to match. Next I'll lower the threshold to 20%, increase the radius to 200, and lower the intensity to 0.1 so that we've got a really big, really soft glow. Finally I added the levels effect and very slightly raised the output black to take away some contrast and make sure nothing reaches perfect black, and that's it. That's how we can recreate the intro sequences from Lovecraft Country. Oh wait, wait a sec, did you hear that? I think that was- no way. It sounded exactly like Upbeat.io. Let me tell you about Upbeat for a sec because I think I'm making a pretty safe assumption when I say everyone watching right now is into editing in some way. And Upbeat realized that when they contacted me and said, Academy of Edits, please help us. We've got this awesome library of music and a really cool website and we just don't know what to do with it. So I told them, people watching my videos are probably gonna need some copyright free music at some point. So can you hook them up or? And then they told me, and this is top secret by the way, so don't tell anyone. They told me that if you click my affiliate link in the description and make a free account every month, you can download and use 10 songs from their catalog in your videos without paying a dime. And as long as you follow their crediting instructions in the description of your video, you won't get hit with copyright either. And of course, you can just rock with 10 copyright free downloads per month for free, but if you decide you want to access the full catalog, have the ability to download however many tracks per month you want, and want to whitelist your channel so that you don't need to leave credit in the description, well that's great because you can get exactly what you just asked for by upgrading to premium for $6.99 per month, or just pick up a lifetime subscription. So check the link in the description, browse the music catalog, and consider signing up if you'd like to step up your videos with some awesome music. That's all for this video and thanks so much for watching. If you're new here and you liked the video, consider checking out my channel and watching another. And if you learned something new in that video, then I wouldn't be opposed to subscribing, I guess. Please subscribe.